Good evening, everybody. Shalom, Rabbi. How are you? Thank God. Baruch Hashem. Okay, so we're doing a new chapter. <clears throat> this is talking about the Seuda uh, of Purim. So it says in the tour, Mitzvah learbot be Seuda Purim, it's Arif Shishtaker, Ad Sheloya da Ben Arur, Amen, Baruch Monechai. So, first of all, right, it says, right, that there's a Mitzvah to do a Seuda. And also, right, you should get drunk there, you know, until you don't know. Between Mordechai and right uh, and uh, Haman, it's all good. Everything is good, right? It's all the same, you know. Uh, you have to get pretty drunk to be on that level. <clears throat> so it says, <clears throat> If he ate at night, he didn't fulfill his obligation. So the seuda has to be done in the daytime. The <clears throat> Omer Alanisim. Also, you gotta do Alanisim. Say Alanisim. Bebet Katamazon. When you say the Birkat Amazon, you put Alanisim there, the Hoda'a, right? Where? In the Thanksgiving, right? Uh, um, so, what about if you start the Seuda during the day and then it continued until the night? That we shouldn't say Alanisim in that case. Okay, so yeah, so there are different opinions about that, by the way. If you're doing the seuda uh, late a little bit and it ends at night, <clears throat> so we'll see what the Bet Yosef says about that. Uh, let's look at the Bet Yosef. So it says Bet Yosef regarding the seuda that we talked about. Right? It's in the first prayer of Megillah. So what does this mean? Doesn't know between Haman and Mordechai, right? One is cursed, one is blessed. Uh, also, right, this whole thing that we do after we read the Megillah, we say, right, Zeresh is cursed, Esther is blessed, right? Uh, Haman is cursed, Mordechai is blessed. And all the wicked are, blessed, are cursed. And all the righteous are righteous, um, is, are blessed. So, the Chen Katabaran, the Ran also writes like that. So, what does that mean? The Eben Arun Haman, the Baruch Monachai, the Chud, Avilu, Shata, Tuba, Lot, Ebe. So, he says, right, that if it was just, you know, Mordechai and Aman, even if you drink a lot, right, you wouldn't make a mistake like that to not know the difference between this and that. So, Therefore, he says, right, it means that you don't know how to say that, you know, whole sequence uh, that we do after the Megillah, you know, you're too drunk to say it. Uh, that's one way of describing it. He writes the name of this rabbi. So there's a story in the Gemara, right, brought down that, you know, Rabbi and Rabbi Zera got together on Purim. So one, you know, took a knife and cut the throat of the other, right? So there was violence there, you know what I mean? Uh, it led to violence. Like it says in the Gemara, So he says, right, that you see from there that we don't pass him like Rabba. So what does that mean? You shouldn't get drunk, right, according to that opinion. Why? Because it leads to violence, you know, you can get into a fight with somebody. 
right? And uh, injure him, God knows, right? God knows what you're going to do. So he says, right, that because of that, Allah is not like that. Uh, so he says, it's not proper to do that. <clears throat> to get drunk like that. It says in Orchot Chaim, right, it says in the Gemara that a person has to get, you know, drunk on Purim. Um, so it doesn't mean it says you should really get drunk because that's a forbidden thing. It's forbidden to get drunk. Uh, he says you don't have a bigger sin than that. Because this causes you right to get into all kinds of illicit relations and shfichut damim. As we said, right, you could kill somebody, God knows what. Right, all kinds of other sins that a person can do when he's drunk. Uh, so he says, therefore, what's the solution? Drink more than you usually do, right? So if you usually have one, have two, you know? If you usually have two, have three, right? Something like that, right? Uh, a little bit more than you usually have. <clears throat> okay, so, right, you see from there that not everybody agrees, right? That you have to get really, really drunk, uh, you know, on Purim. There's also other opinions that say it's not a good idea to get drunk, you know? So, what's practically speaking, right? What, what should a person do? Right? So, it depends on his situation, right? Uh, on his nature, you know what I mean? Some people, when they get drunk, they get violent, you know, and abusive and stuff like that. So, if you get like that, you know, it's better not to drink at all, you know what I mean? Or drink very little, you know, not too much, right? Uh, so, this way, you're not going to get into, you know, all kinds of problems uh, with your personality, you know? Uh, getting getting violent and abusive, right? We don't want that. So you know, but if you're somebody who can hold your drinks, hold your liquor, you know what I mean, and you know, behave nicely in a nice way, so then you can drink more. You know what I mean, depending on how you how strong you are. That's the thing, you know. Different strokes for different folks. Everybody's got different, uh, you know, uh, a different. Uh, uh, he's got a different measure when it comes to this, right? Different ca calibration, <clears throat> depending on his nature. Uh, it says in the Kafachayim, by the way, that, you know, according to Kabbalah, you're supposed to really get drunk, you know, like like literally, you know, like what it says. But that's, you know, that's only for people who can handle it, as we said, right? You know what I mean? But otherwise, if you can't handle it, you know, and you get out of hand, you, you lose you lose control, you get violent and this and that. Right? We don't want that. You know, I remember I used to see people, as you know, as I told you guys before. You know, there's some people, in the, you go on the street, right, uh, and you see people who are Lying in the street, you know, throwing up because they drank too much. You know what I mean? It's disgusting. I mean, you know, you shouldn't get to such a level like that that you're throwing up in the street, you know, like a crazy man. You know what I mean? We don't want that. You know what I mean? That's already going too far a little bit, right? You know, make a, make a you know, make a, make an ass out of yourself, you know, excuse my expression, right? Don't, uh, you shouldn't do that, right? Uh, be, be, you have to remain a human being, right? That's something. <laughs> so, depending on how you hold your liquor, as we said, you know? Uh, but um, you know, if you drank a little bit more than you usually do, that's also good, you know, whatever, right? If you can't drink too much, <clears throat> that's also good. I remember one time uh, when I was a, a bacher in yeshiva, you know, so uh, what happened was that the, one of the rabbis invited me to sit without Purim, you know, and uh, you know, so the so we went there, you know, and uh, went to his house. Uh, and uh, we had a nice meal. It was beautiful, you know, and uh, whatever. Everything was good. But, you know, I was waiting for the liquor to be served. You know what I mean? Uh, the wine, whatever. There was there never came. <laughs> so <laughs> in his house, you know, they didn't drink at all. You know, so you see, right, that there are some. <laughs> there are some, you know, who hold like this opinion that, uh, you know, you shouldn't drink at all. You know, so it depends, as you said, right? As we said, on your nature. You know, I was really shocked when I saw that. You know, like the, they had no liquor, they had no wine, no nothing. You know, like I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my God, what kind of Purim is this, right? They had no, nothing to drink. <laughs> so I went I went home, I was disappointed a little bit, you know? Uh, so what did I do? I stopped off the liquor store, you know, and I bought a bottle of wine. I, I went to drink at home. I said to myself, you know, how can I miss this mitzvah? So I bought a bottle of wine and I went, to, I went home and I drank at home. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, you know, everybody's got a different nature. But according to your, your opinion, one, 
one should always try to drink at least a little bit or as we said you know that uh, depends on your nature you know what i mean depends how you hold your liquor you know like you know yourself okay. right what what your limits are okay <laughs> you know and uh, so go according to that you know according to what you know yourself don't go you know don't go too crazy right uh yeah so you know the most important thing is you know that it should all be for the good you know like everything for good you know uh, it should ha it should have good results you know you should be happy and simcha you know sameach and right uh, in a good mood you know happy and joyous you know and uh, not many right don't go crazy you know what i mean like a maniac some kind of nutcase you know like that's not uh that's not a good thing you know So you know what it is, right? That um, they say the Chazal that uh, you know the word yain, right? Wine on in, in the Hebrew, Hebrew gematria, right, is seventy. So it's the same as sod, right? Secrets, you know. So what happens is that when a person drinks, all those secrets come out, you know. So what does that mean? The real himself comes out, what he really is, you know. So if you really are a good person, you know, and you're not violent, you know, and you're not abusive, so you can drink a lot, you know, no problem, right? But if the real you is a nasty, mean guy, right? Uh, whatever, right? Uh, so then watch out, you know. <laughs> Don't drink too much. You know? I just, uh, you know, hold it, right? uh, control yourself. Okay. So that's the story with the drinking, right? So then he goes on. As we said, right? If he ate at night, he didn't fulfill the obligation. So he said, that's a, it's a statement of Rava over there in the Gemara. <coughs> so he explains the reason. What's the reason why? Because it says in the Esther, right? The days right, of, of Simcha, which it means the daytime. Right? This rabbi says, Right, so he says that this rabbi says that you should do like Lele Shabbat, you know, Beomo. In other words, do a seuda at night and also in the daytime on Purim, just like Shabbat. Right, so, uh, but he says that, uh, right, uh, they didn't agree with him, right? Uh, this uh, rabbi didn't agree with him. So the truth is, right, that um, the main seuda is in the daytime, right, uh, and the rest is just right uh, icing on the cake, right. Uh, but the main, the main one is the daytime seuda. Okay, good. So let's go on. So he says, "Katu berachotayim." Says in this book, So he says there's a custom, you know, to eat, uh, you know, like um, uh, seeds, you know, all kinds of seeds. Whatever. And today, nobody does this. I don't see anybody who does this today, but whatever. They had this custom like this. It says in the Daniel. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It's talking about all kinds of like, you know, um, uh, Legumes, you know, like the kidney, you know, things like kit, right? Uh, things like this. Uh, today, I don't, I didn't see anybody who does this. But anyway, right? Katav Rabenu Asher says Rabenu Asher. Yes, in Hashanagu, Sholel lo lecho basra balayla. Some have a custom not to have at night meat. Kedesh loit u beachshavu sheis seudat purim. Why? They shouldn't make a mistake, right, and think that that's a seudat purim at night, right? Because you're supposed to do it in the daytime. Okay, so yeah. Um Katub Old Sham Seudat Purim Shahla Balaila Loya Tsai de Khobato. It says also over there, as we said, right? If you eat at night, the Seuda, you didn't fully obligation. Yesh me farshim ken laila shen avoka keneged kenegdo. Some explain that that means, right? Um uh, That uh, it's talking about their simcha. That you know, there's no simcha right at night because uh, you know if a person doesn't have light right in his house, whatever. Tov, Mishal, Mishnishba, Litanot, Mau. 
So this rabbi was asked, right? What about if a person made a uh, vow, right? Made a made an oath not to eat, uh, not to, to fast on Purim. So what's the rule, right? Does he have to fast? So he says, yeah, you have to fast, you know, because you you know you made a vow or you made an oath, right? So <laughs> since you use the name of God, you got to fulfill your oath. So he says you can do it at night. They would say it in full obligation. It says also over there, furthermore. Purim shechal yot be'erev Shabbat. If Purim falls on Erev Shabbat, Avdinan seudat Purim mi be'od yom. So then, right, we do the seuda like, you know, earlier because, you know, we got to get ready for Shabbat. We already talked about this before. We mentioned it. Right, uh, because at night you got to make kiddush for Shabbat. You have to also eat, right? Something for the seuda, <coughs> for the Shabbat seuda. So therefore, the rule is, right, that um, when it falls on Friday, Purim, you know, we do the seuda earlier. So this way we have time, you know, to be get ready for Shabbat and to be hungry, you know, for Shabbat. Uh, so we can eat something, right? Otherwise, if you eat late, then you're not going to be hungry for Shabbat. And so that's not good. So therefore, he says, some will do, do it in the morning. Everything goes, goes going to custom. Okay. So yeah, it's a good, good idea to do it earlier, right? If it falls on Friday. Um, okay. The Siman Tafresh Pechet Katavti Bekeshechal Yom Tetva Beshabbat. Right? So he says, we already wrote uh, in one of the former chapters, right, that if if um, the 15th of Adar falls on Shabbat, right, which is the time for Yerushalayim, right, to, to have Purim there. Krakim <clears> Mukafim. <throat> Uh, we already wrote, right? When you do the seuda, right? The seuda we do on Sunday. If that, if that, it falls like that. Katuba tuma tadeshen, right? It says in tuma tadeshen, shenagu rov haolam laasot ikar seuda purim bearbit. So he says most people do it at night, the seuda. When imshachim ba ada laila, and then what they do is right, they go until the night. The rov seuda. So in other words, he's telling you like this, right? That. They start like in the afternoon and they finish at night, you know? That's, that's what he's saying. Rova Sauda he says most of the Sauda comes out at night like that. Natan Tamradavar, give a reason for that. He says, But he says he and his rabbis didn't do like that, right? They did they used to do the Sauda in the morning. Uh, right? Um, okay. Good. Katab uh, Od, he writes further, Shematzabet Shuva. So he says, right, in the Tshuva, he found that all the food that the youngsters take, uh, right, even without permission, because of Simchat Purim, from time of reading of Megillah, until the eve of the Seudat Purim, there's two nights in one, in one day, so he says, they're not liable for theft, you know, because you know, they're like, uh, you shouldn't bring it to bed in because of that. So we're not concerned. Right? <coughs> so meaning what? That we have to wave, you know, we have to be more lenient when it comes to Purim, right? And not be so harsh with people, you know, and, uh, you know, take them to bed in, you know, for stealing something, you know, uh, your your food, right? Whatever, your soda, whatever. Because, you know, people are out of, a little bit out of control on Purim, you know, so they do silly things, right? So, you know, so we try to, like, you know, be forgiving with them. That's the idea, right? We don't go too harsh with them. So he says, that's only when they have a custom to do this, right? But Anu says, but us, says the Bet Yosef, right? We don't have this custom, right? So he says, therefore, for us, there's no difference between Purim and any other day, right? In other words, uh, you're still going to be liable for theft if you th if you steal something, right? That's what Maran says. He doesn't agree with this opinion. <laughs> okay, so that's his story, right? <clears throat> Let's go to Shulchan Ruch. So, says Shulchan Ruch, Mitzvah le'arbot b'seudat Purim, right? Or b'seudat echad yotze, right? So he says that there's a mitzvah to have, you know, 
even several seudot, right? Even though it's not an obligation. I'm sorry, I didn't say it right. Not several seudot. He's telling, telling you that have a nice big seudot, right? Have a nice big meal, you know, like a you know, festive meal. So he says, you can fulfill the obligation with one seudot. You don't have to do more than that, right? You can do one seudot. That's good enough. Right? So in the morning, you can, you know, you can have some, you know, cereal, right? Uh, you know, for breakfast. And then in the afternoon, you know, you do the seudot. No problem, right? You don't have to do uh, two seudot, uh, whatever. One is enough. That's the Ramah, right? So then it comes to the Shulchan Ruch and says, right? So if you do the Seuda, as we said, at night, you don't fully obligation, right? So you got to do it in the daytime. So you can eat at night if you want, but that's not going to fulfill your obligation. The obligation will be fulfilled only in the daytime. So uh, says the Ramah here, but says the Ramah, right, even at night you should do a little bit, you know, a little bit Seuda, you know, in other words, it's good, good, good idea, but the truth is it's not an obligation. But, uh, you know, in order to right, to, to be joyous, you know, rejoice at night as well, you know, have a little soda is also good, right? It doesn't hurt. That's what we're saying. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Oh, right, this is the one we talked about already. Right? So, right, as we said, right, you got to get drunk on Purim. Right, uh, and uh, you know, as we said, right, depends on your, you know, your personality, right, your character, how you hold your liquor. You know, if you can hold it good, you can drink more. If not, right, don't drink too much. You know what I mean? I remember one time, you know, when I, uh, when I, in my younger days, right, uh, you know, I, I called my rabbi and I asked him. I said, "What about the ladies? Should they drink?" You know, and for him, so he told me, "No, he says no, ladies don't drink." <laughs> So, <clears throat> right, so the question is why, right? Uh, what's the reason why? So the truth is, you know, there's a Gemara like this, you know, that says that when a woman has, like, two drinks or more, you know, she gets really out of control, you know? The women women can't hold their liquor so good, you know? So this is the reason we don't want, we don't want them to drink, you know, uh, so much, you know? They can have maybe one, you know, like one glass of wine you know, or, or whatever, you know, something like that, but... Uh, two or more is going to be, you know, maybe a problem. You know what I mean? So better to avoid it, if you, you know, because uh, you know women don't hold the liquor like the men do. You know, that's that's the obvious. You know, that's that's the situation. What can you do, right? It is what it is. You know, we don't want the right the things to you know get out of hand altogether, right? To lose control <laughs> altogether. So therefore, right, uh, the rule is that uh, you know the women shouldn't drink really much. You know, like uh, like the men. You know, it's not the same thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, so says the uh, <coughs> says the Rama here. Some say right, you don't have to do so much, you know, to get so drunk, you know, like that, right? You can't tell the difference between Haman and Mordechai, right? Uh, you know, right? Some say just do a little bit more than you usually do, right? As we said, right? We mentioned that in the bet yourself. Uh, and then he goes to sleep, right? And he doesn't know between Haman and Mordechai because he's asleep, right? That's what it means, right? Uh, according to that opinion. Uh, right? It says, oh, it's all, it's all good, you know? In other words, as long as you, you know, your your intention is for the good, you know, purpose, right? Uh, you can, you know, whatever, whether you do a lot or a little, it's good. That's what he says, right? <coughs> Okay. Right? So it says, So it says also, right, as we mentioned, you shouldn't fast on Purim, except, you know, if you had like a scary dream or something, right? So there, you may be able to do it, right? Uh, depending on the situation, right? Uh, call your local rabbi, right? And ask him about that, if you have a problem with that. You know, you had a scary dream, whatever, and you want to fast because of that dream, you know, whatever. Today, you know, we don't do that so much, uh, the truth is, you know, unless it's like a very, uh, it's one of those scary, really scary dreams, you know, where you have to really fast, you know, whatever. It's, it's advisable to fast. So he says, there are some who have a custom to dress on Purim, you know, like, uh, you know, Shabbat clothing, you know, like nice clothing. Right? Uh, some have a custom to do that. The he says that's the proper thing to do, he says the Ramah. Okay, good. 
וגוזן, ונוהגים לעשות סעודת פורים, זה אחר המנחה. So he says the custom is to do, right, the סעודה after מנחה, right? So, you know, we, we pray מנחה early, right, that's the custom. And then, after we pray מנחה, right, uh, we go and do the סעודה. That's usually the way it's done. Why do we do that? Because, you know, once you get drunk, right, uh, we don't want you praying drunk, Mincha, you know what I mean? It's going to be a problem, right? Uh, so better to do it before. Uh, so the proper thing to do, go to early Mincha, right? What does that mean, early Mincha? Like, you know, one o'clock, two o'clock, right? Go pray early, and then come home and do the Seuda, right? Let's say three o'clock, you know, that's a good time to do the Seuda around that time, right? Three o'clock is good. Okay, so yeah, I'm just giving you an example, right? It doesn't have to be that, you know, exactly three o'clock. Could be a little bit later, could be a little bit earlier. It's all good. Uh, okay, so uh, it goes on. So he says, So he says, the most of the seuda should be in the daytime, though, you know? Don't do most of the seuda late, you know, at night, you know, it's going to be too late already. Not like the custom, he says. He says, some people have a custom, you know, that they do it too late. So most of the Seudah comes out at night. Ah, so that is right. What about if Purim falls on Friday, right? As we as we mentioned. They should do it in the morning, right? The, the Seudah. This way it won't interfere with Shabbat. You have time to get ready, you know, and get a little bit hungry, you know, so you can eat at night a little bit, right, for Shabbat. <laughs> because of the cover of Shabbat. Right, so it says, Whoever wants to do Seudah always in the morning, he can do that, right? Because after all, it's daytime, right? So if you want, if you like to do the Seudah in the morning, you, you're free to do so, right? Uh, whatever. Uh, Right. Some say, as we said, they should eat seeds, right? The... <coughs> like it was done with Daniel. Chavarav and his friends over there, right? When they were in Persia. Babel, I'm sorry, Babel. It's also good to, he says, to study a little Torah before you do the Seudah. It's always good to do Torah, right? It's always good, no, no matter what time it is. <laughs> That's what he's saying, right? What's the what's the source for that? Right? Uh, we, the, the Jews had right uh, light and rejoicing. So light is Torah, right? Darshin and Ora is Torah, right? Light is Torah. So he says there's a little bit of obligation to do two days, right? 14th and 15th when it comes to Simcha. That's the custom, he says. Some say the Ima. <laughs> right? If somebody damages his friend, because of a simcha porin, he doesn't have to pay, right? As we said, right? But Mara didn't agree with that, right? He said, no, nah, you still got to pay, right? If you do something, you know, some, if you do some monkey business on Purim, you got to pay for that, right? Just like any other day. Okay. Unless there's like a custom like that, you know, in that town, whatever, so, you know. Okay, as we said, right? That's what we said. So, Then, okay, very good. I just wanted to see what it says there. Okay, so that's all right. We don't need that. <laughs> we're good. Okay, so we're done with bet. So we can try Gimel. Let's see what's going on there. If you have any questions, let me know. So, as we said, right in the tour, that when we do Birkat Amazon, we say Alanisin there, right? Uh, because it's Purim. 
בפרק במה מדליקים, where is that in Shabbat, right? חבטא על דמוד א', it says that. ואם התחיל בסעודתו ביום משכה עד הלילה, right, so what about if he started the סעודה in the daytime and it went till the night? Do you still say על הניסים? Because the Purim is already over, right? So the question is, do you still say it? So as we said, right, the Rosh holds that you don't say it. So comes Maran and says, אבל הגאות מהימוניות כתבו ברק בן אלכית בלכות גדילה. But this rabbi says differently, right? He says, בשם הרם שצריך לברך על הניסים. Right, you have to do על הניסים, he says. כדי להשכחה רב, צר של שבת ומוציא שבת. The rabbi used to do also, right? On Shabbat, מוציא שבת, he should do also Shabbat. So what does that mean? He would say רצה, right? Even though Shabbat is already over. Like סעודה שלישית, you know? And that's הלכה, by the way, we do that, you know? Even though you finish a סעודה שלישית, and it's already dark, right? Uh, still, we say, we still say Ritze on Shabbat. So the same thing also here. <coughs> That's what it says also in Fat Chaim. B'Shem Ari Mikurbil, right? So it seems like most of the, right, the, the authorities seem to say that you should say Alani Sim, right? Even though it's already night and the Purim is already over. So let's see the Shulchan Ruch on that. אומר על הניסים בברכת המזון, right? says as we said, when you do ברכת המזון, you say על הניסים, בברכת הארץ, right? Uh, where is that? In the second blessing, right? על הארץ ועל המזון. ואם התחיל סעודתו ביום ומשכה את הלילה, what about if you start the סעודה in the daytime? And then it went until the night. Usually, right, it does, by the way, you know, usually it goes till the night uh, in most places, right? It goes long. So, על הניסים, right? So, אומר הניסים, we do say על הניסים, right? That's the halacha. The Batra Tchilat Seudat Why? Because we go according to the beginning of the Seuda. There is one that says, right, uh, that you shouldn't say it, right, as we said. There's another opinion. So says the Ramah here, or somebody, whoever it is, the custom is like the first opinion, right? So what does that mean? We do say, right? <laughs> so the halakha is that even though you finish the Seuda at night and Purim is already over, we still see Alanisim, right, in, um, in Birkat Amazon. What about Arvit, though, right? You don't say Al-Nisim, right? Because that's already night. So for Arvit, we don't say, because it's already over, you know? That's it. But when it comes to Birkat Amazon, since you start the Seuda in the daytime, we do say, right? That's the difference. Okay, good. We got one more and we're done. So now, right, we talked about the issue of the Seuda, right? How to do the Seuda. So now the question comes, right, we have another mitzvah, which is Mishloch Manot, right? Sending food to your friend, right? Your your Jewish friend, right? We're talking about, right? Not to your, right, uh, Goyesha friend. We're not talking about that. That's not the mitzvah. So, yeah, uh, whoever it may be, right? Whatever, some Jew that you... Want to honor him, you know, whatever you want to write, uh, you want to make him happy, uh, send him something, right? So we'll see the tour, what he says about this. So says the tour, so what's the minimum? Sending two types of food, right, or drinks to one person that's the minimum. Right, you uh, right. So if he leaves the seudah, the shel chaveru yatsa. So, right as it says in the Gemara, that you know the people who were poor, right? What would they do? They didn't have money, you know, to buy you know food for their friends, right? So what would they do? They would like switch the seudah one with the other, you know. So this way they would fulfill the obligation. You know? I take your seudah, you take my seudah, right? Uh, you know, you take my, I take your plate, you take my plate. Right, so this way we already we both did the mitzvah without having to spend any extra money. <laughs> but uh, you know, this you you can do when when you don't have money, right? Uh, but if you have money, right, uh, you don't have to resort to this kind of thing, right? There's no reason to to resort to this. But uh, the truth is, you know, he says you can. I mean, you know, in the tour. Let's see how the Beit Yosef explains it. <clears throat> okay, let's see the bit Yosef. So says bit Yosef, 
right? Need uh, to It was already explained, right, in a different chapter. <laughs> this whole mitzvah. <clears throat> okay. So, as we said, right, if they switch seudot, they full obligation. So he brings a source for that, right? Perk kama the Megillah. First perk of Megillah, Zayin Amud Bet. It says over there, Abaya Baravin Rav Hanina Rav Avin Mechalafes Seudatayu Lehadade. So these two rabbis, right? They used to change the Seudah, right? Switch, right? You take my entree, I take your entree, right? And we full obligation like that. Uh, as we said, Upei Sharan. So Ran Ran explains there. Right. He says the Ran says the reason why they did it this way is because they didn't have enough money to buy, you know, to buy extra food. So they just, you know, made a switch. Right? So they didn't have enough money to have, you know, to buy two meals, one for himself and one for his friend, right? <laughs> so therefore they switch, right? That's what they do in order to fulfill the obligation. In order to do the seuda and also mishloch manot, right? So you kill two birds with one stone over here, right? You do the seuda, also mitzvah, and also you do the right, mishloch manot, sending you, you know, food to your friend. Okay, right. The problem is, you know, if one of them has bad food, the other one has good food, you know, you're gonna get into trouble, right? Like that, you know. One of them is going to have to take some bad food. <laughs> so hopefully they're both good, you know. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, one, one is going to get a raw deal over there, right? Whatever, right? Okay. So uh, good. So then he brings Rashi right over here. Rashi, Piresh, Mechalta Sudatay, Uzeochel, Imze, Zebepurim Shel Shanazo. Yeah, so Rashi explains it differently, right? He explains that it means like this, you know, that one year, right, they will come to this guy's house and eat by him, and then the other year they will go to the other guy's house, right? So this way like, they used to switch off, you know, like being guests and hosts. That's the way he explains it. Actually, so it says, Maran, difficult, you know, this explanation. Why? Al-Dabrav, the im can, if so, right? They weren't doing Mishlach Manot every year, right? Like that. So it doesn't turn out good. If you're going to tell me they were sending, right, uh, food one to the other, so then what is it coming to teach you, right? So therefore, right, he said, telling you the explanation of Rashi doesn't really fit in very well here. It's interesting, right? Usually we don't argue with Rashi like this, you know, but here, you know, it doesn't make any sense, he's saying, right? Explanation of Rashi. So again, right? What's the problem? The problem is that Rashi's telling you, right? One, you know, they would do like one year here and one year over there, you know. But then, how did you do the mitzvah mishloch manot? That's the question, right? Like that, like that. You didn't switch. Okay. So how does that help you? That's what he's asking, right? The uh, Bet Yosef. So therefore, right? The explanation of the Ran is the correct, correct one, right? Meaning what? That not that they were going one year here and one year there, right? That's not really a solution. So what's the solution? The solution is that they were switching entrees, right? As we said, right? Uh, that's the way to do it. So this way, right? Each one does both mitzvot, right? The seuda and also the mitzvah of bishloch manot. Of sending food to your friend. Okay, that's the end of the bet yourself. Let's see shulchan and we're done. Right? So he says you gotta send at least to one person, right? Two types of food. Whether it's you know meat, right, or other kinds of food, whatever it is, right? Uh, whatever you want to give him, right? One one uh, right meat, one meat dish, one right, one side dish, you know, or a French fries, I don't know, God knows, right? Whatever, right? That's good enough, right? One steak, one French fries. That's good, right? You're good, right? Or uh, whatever, right? Whatever it is, uh, that's two, 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 uh, two portions. So that's good, right? Shteimanot ish leacher lechel ad merber lishloch lerim meshubach. So he says, if you do more, it's even better, right? In other words, you send to more people. You know, if you have if you have the strength for that and time, 
to send to more people, it's it's praiseworthy, right? But you can fulfill a mitzvah with one person. That's good enough. Okay. Mm, yeah. So he says, right? if they don't have, right, what to buy, what do you do? Machalifim chavarot. You switch entrees, right, as we said, right? That's the way you do. Switch the entrees. Right? So each one sends his soldat to the other guy, right? <coughs> so this way you're doing two mitzvot, right? As we said. Mishloch manot, right? Uh, the seuda and also the mishloch manot. Good. So, um, by the way, what's the purpose of this mitzvah, right? To, to, to increase camaraderie amongst the Jews, right? To have love, you know, and good relations with each other. So we send each other gifts, you know? This makes us, you know, love each other more and so forth and so on. That's the idea, you know? Uh, okay. It's also a time of giving, you know? Everybody has to give on Purim. You know, you got to be a giving person. So giving is a good thing on Purim, right? It's, it's good every day, but on Purim is especially. It's really a time of giving. Uh, okay, so says the Ramah here, Yesh lishloach manot beyom velo balayla. Ah, so Ramah says something important here, right? Mishloach manot, you're supposed to do in the daytime, not at night. Okay? Uh, and why is that, by the way? The reason is because the seuda is in the daytime, right? And the mishloach manot is a seuda. So therefore, right, since the seuda is in the daytime, the mishloach manot should also be in the daytime. That's the idea, you know? That's the reason why you should send it in the daytime. So don't send it at night, you know, and uh, right, uh, otherwise you'll have to do it again. <clears throat> right? That's the idea. Okay. So then he goes on the Ramah. So he says, What about if you sent it, right? And you, he doesn't want it, right? So he says, Ramah, you still fulfilled your obligation, right? Even though he didn't take it, right? In other words, the fact that you sent it to him is already good. He didn't want, okay, he doesn't want to, you know, maybe he has different tastes, right? He likes, you know, more spicy food, you know, you send him some bland stuff, right? So he doesn't want your bland food. You know what I mean? But uh, since you sent it to him and he refused, you did fulfill your obligation because you did it, right? You sent it, you know? So that's that's what it is, right? That's what Ramah is saying. So he says, the women are also obligated in this mitzvot, right? So what does that mean? They have to do the seuda, just like the men, right? As we said, but not to drink too much, right? The women shouldn't drink too much. Maybe one, right? We'll give them one, one drink. That's good enough, right? One glass of wine. We'll, 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 we'll give them that much at least, right? Uh, that's okay. But more than that, not a good idea. So uh, as we said, right? But the seuda, they have to do, you know? And also the mishloch manot, and also the gifts for the poor, they have to do all these mitzvot, just like the men. <laughs> okay. But he says like this, right, that uh, when you're sending, when a woman is sending, right, mishloch uh, manot, he says, good idea to send it, to, you know, to a woman, you know, and a man should send to a man, right? So this way, right, the... Uh, because sometimes, you know, a person can come, like, to a doubt whether, you know, he betrothed that woman or something, right? He betrothed her, you know, whatever. So because of that, right, the truth is it's very far-fetched, you know, to, to say that. But uh, but anyway, right, the custom is like that, whatever. But the truth is, but you know... What about if, if they are family, for example? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, if, you, if, you, if, a, if a woman gave to a man or the opposite, right, they fulfilled their obligation, you know? Obviously, you know what I mean? Especially if it's family, right? Uh, all the more so. But uh, you know, it's just uh, you know, it's like more more tsanua this way, you know, more tsniut. You know, the woman sends to the woman, man sends to the man. Okay, whatever. But anyway, right? It doesn't it doesn't hold back on its uh, If you sent to a man, your woman, you did, you're okay. You did good. You know, you you're good. Uh, okay, so uh, good. But he says, but he says, when it comes to the gifts to the poor, right, we don't care about that. So what does that mean, right? A man can give to a woman, and a woman can give to a man. We don't care. So, uh, yeah, so we're done with this chapter, Baruch Hashem. So I guess we'll stop here, but I just wanted to tell you one more thing, you know? If you remember, right, we talked two days ago about the issue of doing the Brit Milah before the reading of the Torah, the reading of the Megillah. So there's another reason, by the way, I want to point out, you know, why why we do that first, the, the, the Milah. 
And it's because, right, it's, it says in the Talmud, uh, Masechet Shabbat, that even though the Milah you can do all day, but it says it's Zizim Makdimin, right? The ones who are industrious, right? They do it early. <laughs> so, explain the Zorah Kadosh. What happens is that if you don't do the Bit Milah early, this causes accusation on the child, you know, because you're waiting, you know, the, the Orla, right? The impurity is on his body and you're not getting rid of it, you know? So therefore, right, it's a mitzvah to do the bit milah earlier, as, as early as possible. So therefore, right, what we do, the best thing to do, you know, if you're a good parent, right, you want your have, your child to have good uh, mazal, whatever, right? Do the milah early, uh, right, right after a shachrit, you know, go for it right away, you know, don't don't wait. Uh, but there are some people who do it in the afternoon, that's okay, you know, but I'm just saying, right, that uh, the preferred way is to do it in the morning, right after the prayers, you know, the, that's the best way. Uh, if you really right, want your child to have the proper tikkun, that's the best way to do it. So that's the reason, another reason, right, why we do the uh, the milah before the reading of the Megillah, because the, the, it, it's a little bit of a hurry, you know what I mean? In other words, when it comes to the, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, we're in a hurry, you know, when it comes to the milah, we got to do it fast, you know, if it's possible. So therefore, there's no reason to put it off. Okay, very good. So, we'll see you tomorrow. All right? Uh, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth, health, and happiness. Blessed Hashem, pray for our valiant soldiers. Hashem is helping them to do a great job. And the Chazak Baruch, and we should have only smachot, Blessed Hashem, only good tidings, only joy, rejoicing and joy, right? Everything good. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, Lailatov, all the best. Thank you so much. God bless.